on this episode, we're back with a whole new theme. That's right. This is our new political show. That's right. We talk politics for a whopping two minutes. Yep. And then we jump right out of politics into new summer jobs. Uh, wait, we have new summer jobs? Well, no, I mean, we didn't jump into new summer jobs, but we found some summer jobs or some jobs that paid $10,000. Oh, so if you're into social media, these jobs are for you. Yeah, but what if you're not into social media? Then we're going to use the Jedi mind trick on you. Oh, I like that. Oh, because of the story about the aliens that they saw in Kansas City, right? The UFOs and the, they were in Kansas City and... They were balloons launched in Maryland. Wait, if they're launched in Maryland, they don't fly. He's, wait a minute. How could it be balloons? If Wait, what? How could it These be? These are not the aliens you're looking for. They are weather balloons. Oh, yeah. They're weather balloons. Welcome to What Happened to the World Today. I'm Steve. And I'm Scott. And this is a tale of how bad life decisions led to a YouTube show and podcast. And we're going to talk about what we've noticed is going on in the world today, uh, sans uh, politics and religion. Uh, but man, I'm telling you, we we might not we might need to change this show and just do politics and religion. Oh uh, well, it, apparently it, everybody it, wants to listen to it, even though it's all crap. It is all crap. Uh, the funniest part is um, Donald Trump just gets uh, blasted. Oh, look at that! This flashes over lightning in the background. Uh, Donald Trump just gets blasted on every TV show I watch now. Yes. Like, if he's not part of the show, then apparently the show sucks. It's, it's like crazy. I, I don't uh, get it. I know. It was just it's astounding. But, yeah, truly, truly, truly amazing stuff. Every uh, single president is the butt of jokes because we live in a country that that's acceptable. The difference is the, the media is just like on, uh, what, what do they call it, um, hyperdrive? Oh, yeah. They are everything with him. Yep. Everything and everything. Um, I was watching, um, there's a new, I don't know if it's Netflix show or not, but, um, uh, Julio Iglesias has a new show. No, not, not Julio, Gabriel Iglesias, Gabriel, uh, Iglesias. Gabriel? He's a funny comedian, uh, fluffy. Okay. I'm so fluffy. He's a, you know. Oh, okay. That, not related to Julio, guy. not related no. to Enrique. Okay. No, no. But, um, the funny joke was. They were talking about, oh, uh, God, was it Monroe? I think he liked Monroe. He says, and let's give Monroe some credit. He was the first president that didn't wear a powdered wig. He That's was the true. first president that, that actually didn't wake up in the morning and go, honey, where's my wig? <laughs> so he goes, and we did really good till now. And now we got another guy wearing a. Uh, 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 it's hair. not a powdered wig. It's an orange wig. Here was, here was, he goes, yeah, it was powdered with Cheetos. There we go. Cheetos. Oh. I like that. So yeah, but that, that that was pretty funny. So, so there's that. But yeah, it's just, it's just crazy. I don't know what's going on. I mean, we we should rebrand. Oh, lightning in the background. This yes, shirt, not like this shirt at all. I don't know. We uh, can we can figure that out. But did you yeah. notice anything cool about my background this time? It's orange. It's that like, it's is like, one it's of the most the sensational sunrise. sunsets I have seen ever. Ever. Wow. This is, we walked out of Fleet Farm here in Delavan, and I took pictures on the way in because there was this orange way out in the sky, you know, at the horizon. Mm -hmm. Man, what a beautiful sunset. But, the, you know, cell phones do not zoom that great, right? No, they, so, they zoom terribly. Even zoomed all the way out, it didn't look like much. So we went shopping. 20 minutes later, we come out, and I'm like, oh, my God. I had to take a picture of it. It was just the whole sky was orange. Yeah, that's pretty good looking. I mean, it's it pretty awesome. Looks like a uh, tequila sunrise. Tequila sunrise? Exactly. Yeah. I drink yeah. I drank those. Orange juice. I Unlike the traffic jam you got behind you. Oh, that's just downtown. That's just downtown Las Vegas. That's the container park in downtown Las Vegas. A very cool little uh, shopping center and entertainment center. But uh, you are... Um, looking for these new cool temporary jobs. And I yeah, think well, I found a, uh, a thread in these jobs. Um, well, the reason we don't have these jobs yet, these people who get these jobs are very good at social media and having good following. Yes, having they, good are. Following. they have lots of followers and that's how they get these jobs by having lots of followers. Yes. 
We unfortunately have not figured out how to crack that code and have uh, 100,000 followers. I know, it just freaks me out because I've got like 700 followers, or you know, on LinkedIn. 700, yeah. that's like freaking phenomenal. Why can't I get any of them on, you know? Right, well, uh, you know, and OJ Simpson starts a Twitter and within the first day he's got, what, 650,000 followers? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, come on, people. Well, see, the thing is there, he was, uh, he had notoriety before he started Twitter. Yeah. So but, okay. you want to go do something crazy like tightrope across uh, that, the, the container park? In your, Nothing left to do, in yeah. Your boxers? I have to run naked through Las Vegas. So I don't know if that would be so weird. So anyway, I thought this was kind of cool because you know how much I like to swim and I like being in the pool. So well, you like finding these really cool jobs. I mean, unfortunately, this is another one of those contract jobs where it's a limited job. Yes. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna travel to six pools for yes. Hotels.com. And they're they are calling the the job a pool, a pool hop. Yes. I, 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 don't, I don't understand how that relates because it's like, you know, a bell hop. A bell hop, but this is a pool hop. So I don't understand. I mean, you're going to go review pools, right? Yes. So you're going to get um, $10,000 right. plus travel and lodging expenses to right. travel six of the most epic, epic pool hotels. Now, I was really surprised. Um, I mean, these, are, these are all United States. Yes. Uh, but I was really surprised at the list of pools. Um, really? Of all the pools they picked in Las Vegas, they picked the SLF. I, I, I haven't seen the SLS pool. So it so might be pretty know. impressive. I don't know if it's good or not. Um, it just, I don't, you know, it's the SLS. It's, it's the old Sahara. As, so, as everybody knows, nobody appreciates where they live. They like the stuff that's elsewhere. So you're kind of jaded because you live there, so nothing really flips your trigger. But people going to Vegas, this is probably one of the coolest pools in Vegas for the, the tourists. But there's so many cool pools here. I mean, they've got Topshell pools. They've got, uh, I mean, uh, pools at Lazy Rivers. I'm trying to see. So here's the Foxtail pool at the, I'm trying to see, because there's multiple pools there. So, okay, this is just, okay, this first pool, I don't even know what pool this is. So there's the Foxtail pool, the Retro pool, and the Grand pool. All right, you, if, all right. Sorry, SLS, but I mean, you can go to the downtown Grand, and it's got a pool where you can actually uh, gamble in the pool, and they have a shark tank with a water slide that goes through the shark tank, right? So I'm looking at the foxtail pool, and I'm looking at the pictures of the foxtail pool here, and you can reserve a cabana, but it's got a cabana in the center, cabanas around the outside. I don't know if it's a cabana in the center or whatever, and then it's just a pool with a walkway through the center, pool on both sides. So okay. I'm like, okay, um, okay, view floor plan. Well, one of the first things I noticed about this is only one of these pools is on the East Coast. Everything else is out West. Yeah. And then one of them the, really the, far out West. There's the retro pool lounge, which has got a lounge and a stage at the end of a pool. And I think this is the one you can see from going inside. I've actually seen this one. Um, there's a set of doors that go right out onto this, but it's just a regular rectangular pool. Cool. With cabanas down the sides and chairs down the side and a stage on the end. But and can you get a Copa cabana there? I don't know. I don't know. Barry Manilow is at the, um, at the Westgate. So you'd probably have to get the Copa cabana, uh, at the Westgate hotel and casino in Las Vegas. And then the grand pool is again just a, a rectangular pool. Well, it you got a curved edge and it's got some chairs in the end with umbrellas on it, but cabanas all the way around. And it looks like it's on the roof. Wait, looking at this picture. Um, yeah, rooftop pool views. Oh, so, I actually missed this. There are two on the East Coast. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the one in Miami. So I'm like, uh, uh, I'm like, okay, you know, sure. But they're going to go to Hawaii. Los Angeles, Las Vegas, uh, Colorado Springs, New York, and Miami. See, now, I would have enjoyed going to all of the, Well, one of Los Angeles doesn't flip my trigger. Um, but Hawaii, for sure, I'd love to visit. 
Um, and of course, if I go to Las Vegas, I get to see you and we can see some shows. Um, Colorado Springs, I love Colorado Springs. Um, New York, I've never been to, so I'd go just because it's New York. And of course, I've been to Miami before. Uh, all I remember about, much about Miami is it is hot and sticky. So, so, but I mean, it would be cool to get 10 grand to go do this, go to these sure. six pools. So, and, and I would assume you could do all six pools in a month. Yeah, so. you're blogging it and stuff like that. So then you have another job that you're looking at. Uh, that uh, you found, yes. I I, I, was Ikea, kind of cool. Ikea is seeking a happiness hunter. I, I seek don't, out happiness yeah. in Denmark. I, I, again. But I think this would be cool because I have friends in Denmark. So, uh, you know, if I temporarily live there and get paid money and meet, I thought this was funny. Like the person who wrote this article, you get paid in money and meatballs. I really don't think you get paid in meatballs. You might. I can't invest for fans for meatballs. You might get you might get their meals, you know, a meal voucher at IKEA. Right. But the winning candidate will only live for two weeks in a temporary home in Copenhagen. They'll go to dinners and tours and and determine what makes a happy home. <laughs> you know, and they're gonna document it on social media. Again, social media. Um, average Danish living standards is all you're going to – oh, and receive free meatball meals from Ikea. Oh, yeah, it does say that. <laughs> it does say that. Free so, meatball meals. So there's that one. Then there's – I don't know if you saw the, the Reynolds wrap is looking for a person to travel the company – a company – travel the country sampling barbecue ribs. So they want someone to spend two weeks, and again, they'll get paid $10,000 along with paid travel. So uh, apparently $10,000 seems to be the uh, price for, for this. Yes. But two weeks in August. I think we, I can handle that. Oh, wait, August is my busy time still. Go, going around sampling ribs and stuff like that. God, I love ribs, though. So, you know, I would hire somebody to take my place. Yep. And then, and then, and then Mattress Firm is offering $10,000 to be a, uh, a, a snoozer turn. Snooze a turn, snoozer turns, snooze turns. Okay. They get paid the test beds. Of course. 10,000, it's amazing how they're all 10,000. Actually, one of them we did was a lot higher, it was 20,000, I remember that. Yeah. It was also for six months. No, it was not, it was more than that, it was 60,000. It was 60,000 and it was six months. And then Cape Line Sparkling Cocktails is going to pay somebody $10,000 to go around and sample um, frozen cocktail. Okay. Susie would like that job. It's made by freezing uh, rose wine. So, I, I mean, there's that. Now, here is one that actually pays good money. Well, better money. It is good money, too. A company offers sixty-six thousand dollars to travel the world and eat um, vegan cuisine. Okay, plus all expenses yeah. paid. That would be awesome for you. It's a British company, the Vibrant Vegan Company. They're they're hiring a director of taste, and it's going to go to India, Turkey, Mexico, China, Japan, taste different plant-based foods, and provide feedback. Um, um, and the company offers, you know, subscription base so you can get that food and have it come in. Hey, I should send them my uh, cooking show, see if they think that'd be cool to do on that. That is funny. Uh, despite the company being vegan-focused, the candidate will not be required to be vegan. However, they must focus on solely plant-based ingredients when working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and Which would work for me because obviously I'm not vegan, but I am willing to eat vegan. To right. try it, you know, because the whole purpose is they're trying to obviously find stuff that people are going to enjoy. All right, this is really weird. Send me that link because I don't have that link. Because that's one I'm serious. I'm, I think I'm going to send them my show. Which one? The vegan one? Fun guy, the yeah, the vegan one. Fun Guy the Entertainer cooks for you. And that'd be cool to, to travel around and doing vegan stuff on my show. Okay. I will take that link right now. I will copy it. And I will. I don't know why you didn't find it because it's all part of the same, uh, same link that. Um, yeah, you know me. Once I start going in a hurry, I just do stuff. 
And speaking of which, while you're doing that, we should probably talk about a genuine positivity message. Yeah, we should because we're burning time on the show. Yes. Already. And it's a Danish saying. I'm, I'm, I'm into the Danishes right now. Because but Danish like the food? Yeah. Oh, God, I, I really had a taste for a Danish after I did all this. Okay. Anyway, our, our, our genuine positivity m- message is happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from your own actions. And guess who says they wrote it? Well, you said you found it on a Danish site, but here's yeah. where I put it in and searched for it, and it came up and it said that the Dalai Lama said this. So the Dalai Lama isn't Danish. But then if you go to the real Danish sayings, it where do comes you go right to, up. Where do you go to real Danish sayings? You search just what? It. Just search real Danish sayings. Search real Danish sayings and it comes up here? Yeah. Well, I actually found uh, 15 funny, when I was searching this, 15 funny Danish sayings, of expressions. Right. And I thought we'd go over those really quick. Cool. So when, when the Danish people are surprised, they don't say, holy cow. They say, take a whole vacation. Take a whole vacation, right? I mean, it probably sounds better in Danish, which I can't pronounce. Uh, <laughs> hold that hat, Fetty. I'm not even, that's not even close. Eh. They won't say Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. They say, gentle Moses. And I, this I can't pronounce in Danish. Mild Moses. See, now, now here, here's where you're doing this wrong. You did it right. Moses. Well, you said Jesus Christ, and then you went gentle. No, it's it's Mildy Moses. You have Mild. to have that inflection. Mild Moses. Mild Moses. And then I do like this one. They don't say. Um, they don't ask for the agenda. You know the agenda when you go, hey, what's the right. agenda of the meeting? They go, oh, what's on the wallpaper today? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess they used to write their stuff on the wall. I don't know. And then, and then this, okay, waking up early in Denmark is woke up before the devil puts his shoes on. I don't, know why I, went, I don't know why I went Southern with that. Yeah. But, I don't either. But woke up before the devil puts his shoes on. Hey, how come the Danes don't kill two birds with one stone? Because they hit two flies with one swat. See, does that mean that they are full of flies? I, I have no idea. Are there a lot of flies in Denmark? Yeah, <laughs> oh. Hmm. I don't know what the Danes say, but it's probably similar to that. Yeah, well, that's German. So, and when you get really drunk, you're chicken drunk or fairly withered. And then, and then, I, you know, when you got too many, you have too many drinks. Uh, they won't be under the table. <laughs> They're in the fence. They're uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> They're in the it, fence. It reminds me of when the kids stick their heads between the the fence posts and then get they get stuck. stuck. Yep. Uh, Dane uh, is also never wrong. They just gone wrong in the town. That's, that seems like more sophisticated. I, I write, I like, okay, whatever. And they don't feel stressed. You know, they've gone down with the flag. Going down with the flag. I'm not stressed. I'm just going down with the flag. If a Dane likes to read a lot, they're referred to as a reading horse. That works. You know, horses like Mr. Ed. A reading horse. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. Um, and then when you're really skinny or slim in Denmark, you're described as eel slim. Okay. I don't. And here's what. Okay. Hey, it's really windy out there. You've heard us, you know, go, oh, man, that's like a whole gale. Well, in, in Denmark, it's a half a pelican. Because <laughs> the other half got blown away? I don't know. And then, oh, and I don't understand how this is lucky, because in Denmark, in the casinos, they don't get lucky. They'll shoot the parrot. Okay. <laughs> hey, all right, that was awesome. I just shot the parrot. Yeah, because otherwise the parrot would tell you were cheating. Yep. And when you do something that's in disbelief, <gasps> you must have eaten nails. Okay. Right. I don't believe it. And then, and then you're never on good terms. You and I are on good terms. We're, we're on the good foot. Which is really, really good because if you're on your bad foot, it's going to be a pain. We're on the good foot. So there it is. So we found those, and um, that was that. <laughs> but that's what I found in searching 
real Danish thing, as opposed to one you thought was Danish, but the Dalai Lama yes. is famous for saying it. All right. Hey, speaking of things that not everybody believes in, did you hear about the flying objects over Kansas City? Okay, so they've got pictures posted and everything like that of these flying orbs over Kansas City. Uh, and it was actually over Kansas City International Airport. Yes. So what were they? Well, were they, were they weather balloons again? From well, Let's see, Roswell, that's the original one, right? They were weather balloons. Or what was it from Men in Black? What you saw was swamp gas. Yeah. Well, what's really kind of funny is not too many people use weather balloons anymore. Apparently they still do because that's what they said. They must be weather balloons. Well, let's see. What does it say here? Um, well, the, tweet, the tweet says that six, 600 people responded back saying, yep, UFOs. Okay, yeah, it's, uh, in the end, uh, a spokesperson from the Defense Advanced Research Project says, given the position is likely one of their balloons in a test flight. There you go. Apparently, so they part- launched three balloons from Maryland as part of its adaptable lighter-than-air program. Aha! Instead uh-huh. of, instead of dir- dir- dirigibles? Dirigibles, yeah. Dirigibles yeah. or dirigibles? I don't know. They now have these new... These balloons can fly at altitudes of more than 75,000 feet. Right. While they do not have independent propulsion... The Alta vehicle is designed to navigate by changing altitude and thus taking advantage of different wind profiles aloft. A state-of-the-art winds aloft sensor was, is also being developed on the program. So then the oldest explanation is still the one we're buying today. Sure. It's a, it's a weather balloon. <laughs> they're, not, they're not UFOs. It's a weather balloon. Oh, now, well, there you go. Now, honestly, you know... It's 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 a crapshoot. If aliens do come here, are they going to be friendly, or they're going to try to take us over? Well, I I don't know. All the movies we're seeing is you know we're 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 done for. Well, we're Star Trek doing. was of the feeling that anybody who achieves space flight should have um, grown enough in their what's the word uh, grown up enough not to be bent on conquest. However. You know, just throughout our history of our planet, uh, conquest is how you expand your territory. Right. So look all the f- wars that we've had trying to just get new real estate. Right, but then we realized you couldn't manage all of it, so we gave it back to the people who had it there and just told them, here, you take care of your own land. So, but wow. anywho's, I also came up with a Dutch... Phrase origin story. They have okay, so the Dutch have weird phrases and, and songs and stuff like that. So so this one is he who has butter on his head should stay out of the sun. Hmm. Like, okay, so first off, duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second off, why are you putting butter on your head? Okay, first of all, before we get to that, it's Similar to the English version uh, expression, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. In other words, you should not criticize right. others unless you yourself are without fault. Right. Now, here's uh, where the origin actually comes from. The phrase is said to have been around since the 17th century and was found in a text by the famous Dutch poet Jacob Katz uh, from 1577 to 1660. The reference is unknown, but may refer to a time when people would carry their groceries in baskets on their heads. So is that how you say Jacob in Dutch is Jacob? Jacob. I don't know. Help us out, Andrew. Call, call Scott and let him know. If he's he's going to go, he's in it right, man. Okay, no, he's going to say it like a Jamaican? <laughs> <laughs> wow, we are really confusing our, uh, our, um, our accents this show, but whatever. Yes. It's all good. So cool. All right. But people would carry their groceries and baskets on their heads. So if you had to, okay. Yeah. If you had butter in there, it would melt on your head. I will, I will, or, or anything, um, I can't think of what that's called. The uh, spoilable. What the, I yeah. don't know. Perishable. Perishable. Thank you. Wow. Yay, I was listening and I got something right. 
Yay, you got something right. So with that, we should end the show. I want to say thank you for watching. And if you feel our show is not a bad life decision, please subscribe, like, watch your other shows and channels. Go to whathappened.world. Go down there, connect to us on our uh, social media. You can see all the fun things that we're doing. Uh, so cool. Other than that, I have no idea. What else am I supposed to say? I don't know, but be genuinely positive, live and love life, and have a good one. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next show. Be crazy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.